What is up, down and sideways, you love individuals? Welcome back to League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you, beauties, as we get a final preview look ahead to the LCS Summer Split. Best of threes return, the final of the major regions to kick things off. And before we look at this week one schedule, Mark, I gotta we gotta touch on and just look at this brand new format. Which team's actually going to be benefiting the most from a best of three? Because usually a bottom tier squad, somebody like Immortals, that's the go-to name to throw. Best of ones are great. You throw a cheese, you win the game, you go home. But you have that bounce back opportunity now in best of threes. Best of ones, more importantly for me, you don't have that room to make multiple mistakes. You make those multiple mistakes, you should be counting on your opponent to be strong enough, to be hungry enough, to capitalize upon those, take the advantage, find a way to victory. Best of three, you make that mistake, you drop that first game, find a way, wipe the slate, clear the memory, get right back out onto the rip, and you still got your two chances to take the series for yourself. And when I talk about that, immediately coming to mind is Cloud9, the number one team that should have been last split in the LCS this is the split that I think that they hit that mark. They find that potential, and a big part of that is going to be that breathing room you are provided, that uh, you know that leniency that you are given in a best of to lose one of those matches in it. I think is going to be a big one. You can have those whoopsies, you can have those mistakes, you can learn, you can clean it up, and you can still have those opportunities that Cloud9 knows that they can capitalize on in those extra games to push through and be the victor of the series. Yeah, it makes sense for them because they were also notoriously uh, slow starters, it felt like. And you can have a vain mid-game and go, uh, yeah, that, that ain't it. So we'll adapt that for game two. Throw that in now. Reaper as your head coach. And that's a guy who has some of the best adaptations, best draft phases that we've seen out of a coach coming out of North America at the very least. So Cloud9 seems like the easy answer. I'll also throw in a new squad like Dignitas solely because four-fifths of these guys, this is such a veteran heavy, probably alongside Cloud9, the most veteran squad in the entire league, which means just the sheer number of best of series that four of these five starters have played is going to help them throughout this regular season. Which I got to thank the promotional stuff for the LCS, you know, starting to get up into gear as we approach our, our season start date in the summer. Because absolutely seeing those Dignitas boys, seeing Sven speak a licorice back in the LCS, good times, good feelings, and absolutely a squad that I would put up into that forerunner of the positions for benefiting from going to best of three. I think that these players are all players that have shown their capabilities within a best of type of scenario throughout their career and their ability to perform in that, getting that extra runway room, getting that time Again, in a series comparatively like Cloud9, where you can make a mistake, not because you make these mistakes or you you know are a slow starter the way Cloud9 was in split, uh, split, spring split. You go to this one with Dignitas and it could be because it is about gelling together. It's about solving and figuring out how this team is gonna work, how everything's gonna happen, the communication, all sorts of things, which can lead to inconsistencies, solving that out in the, in the immediate term. That's where you get the benefit of the best of three. You can have a wonky game. You can have something go wrong, go uh, uncoordinated, take a step back, go behind stage, reset, and come back in, and still have your opportunity and chance for the series. Dignitas is one of those teams that I think will benefit. And we won't have to wait long to see that Cloud9 Civil War yellow versus blue because Dig versus Cloud9 are that second game of first day action and uh, obviously before that Team Liquid FlyQuest also a fantastic matchup but I think everyone's waiting to see a couple of these dig guys first return to the pro scene but then also immediately you're going we get Sven versus Berserker in the bot lane throw in Vulcan who Sven also used to play with and this is just a full revenge tour for dig Big time treat this matchup, getting to see all the different storylines and everything out. You've already laid down a couple of them. One of the ones I want to look at, of course, still is the guy that wasn't a member of Cloud9, doesn't have that type of connection, but was a thorn in the side 
of Cloud9 many times back on Team Solo Mid. I'm talking about your boy Spica in the jungle for Dignitas. I think that he has been one that has had a relatively good rivalry and matchups up against Blabber on the other side of Cloud9. And it's easy to forget about that given the time away. He's returned. We are back to that type of story. And the other one is your boy Licorice up in the top side against Thanatos making the LCS debut. Licorice returning to the LCS after a split off away. Can't wait to see how that top lane matchup yeah, plays out. I mean, out. If, you, if you want to prove, as a rookie, beat the best top laner of the split from the previous split. Uh, well, two splits ago now in summer. But yeah, that's obviously across the board going to be a super fun matchup. And then Team Liquid versus FlyQuest. Obviously, we know the little bit of history there. Beat them in finals after they got knocked down to uh, losers. And of course, Jan kind of seeing he's fed up with Wimbo and Inspired talking a little bit of trash and the LCS went all in on that on the promo video uh, for summer but we'll see what the new mid laner what quad coming in for FlyQuest does if that gives them a new angle because you know he better have his keyboard ready for APA to talk a little trash to him. Uh, he, he better be hitting tab and mute all is the real one right away against APA that's a free one I'll give you that tip freebie uh, FlyQuest versus Team Liquid is another very exciting one, of course, because of that rivalry, because of that little bit of bad history, bad blood, bad alt chat between these teams as they've been fighting, and the changes that FlyQuest made. Specifically, of course, Quad in the mid lane, the big one. I think a lot of people unhappy, uh, you know, disapproving of making this type of move, but I don't think anybody was looking at the potential that quad represented and what you thought about what he could rep, you know, be as a future prospect. Nobody thought that he wasn't someone that you wanted to see what was there, wanted to take dust it off and see what you got, what type of just how much you can push it with a player like quad and where you are at this early point. It's going to be interesting with the mix, of course, knowing how, you know, inspired and whippo operate and knowing how veteran they are. And then you go down to look at, okay, well, you got quad, and then even more so, you still got a very green Masu and Busio down in the bottom lane is the other one that you're looking at. But they're so looking to prove themselves because you go back even past MSI, their last couple playoff series, you're not feeling good at all about FlyQuest. And frankly, they were embarrassed internationally. And now everyone is kind of talking about, wow, Bwipo, maybe he was really overrated. Inspired seems like a bad teammate. So the stocks for FlyQuest are at an all-time low for how high they were at times throughout the spring split. It's going to be important to keep that in check, right, as we get through these early points, and that's going to work both ways. You have to be responsible with not holding too much of a penalty, too much of a knife to FlyQuest because of that underperformance, because of these choices that they have made within uh, the roster. And then at the same time, you have to hold them accountable to those mistakes and realize that you have to be patient with the success if it happens or or the hotness or whatever we see from them that you want to go wacko bonanza for. You have to check it and realize, well, we saw this type of level of excitement and good type of things happening, and we crashed and burned at MSI. So we do need to be realizing that we need to see a little bit more uh, verification for a squad like FlyQuest before we get back onto the hype train. The problem with having two great matchups to kick things off on day one is day two not quite looking as spicy in this opening weekend. NRG versus 100 Thieves, that's fine. That's an interesting matchup. And then Immortal Shopify. The real secret here is now in 2025 when you have two less LCS teams throw an interesting angle with an LLA team and a challenger squad and all of a sudden you're guaranteed a good matchup pretty much every time. At, at least an interesting matchup interesting. every single yes. time seems to be yeah. the very way. I don't know how much about the quality. We can certainly guarantee the LCS always a question mark on something like that. But when you do look at these matchups, 100 Thieves versus NRG, if we get the NRG that was a top team at top eight at Worlds, a quarter finalist, a team that beat I haven't seen G2, them in a while. Where, where are they at? Yeah, absolutely. That, they, they have not left that Worlds <laughs> tournament time. I think we've not seen them since then. Yes, but if we get that type of energy, this summer split, this 100 Thieves matchup, incredible. This one's going to be a banger of a matchup. Yep. If we don't, it's not quite delivering. It is going to be more so in that middle tier. It is going to be a mundane type of matchup is the expectation. And then you move to the Immortals 
uh, Shopify Rebellion. And I think a lot of people don't really have any expectations or hype for that one. I will be waiting, though, because I'm going to give week one of the LCS that chance, that opportunity to give me that surprise. And that could be it in the Immortals Shopify Rebellion one where you do get that heat. You do get some wackiness. You do get your banger. Going to get a lot more games to judge off of quickly when we do have these best of three. So we can completely overreact after that first week. One thing we're not overreacting about is BLG continuing to be the best team in the LPL. Had the undefeated matchup against World Elite. And credit where credit is due. WE showed up this series, especially game one. Gave BLG all that they could handle. Take them down. But Billy Billy bounces back in a big way in games two and three. Increasingly levels of domination and fearless draft. And then you have a kindred pick to fall back onto if you're Jun in game three. That's that's just how you drew it up. Oh, man. It just should be illegal to be able to pull out the kindred at that point in the draft and get that type of performance from Jun. Holy cow, BLG. Yes, I think this is an important series to look at because of obviously where WE was showing so far early and being in that type of state of, of undefeatedness and what they showed right against a BLG that has relatively, as far as power, been a six out of 10, seven out of 10 since the end of MSI, not necessarily showing us they were that MSI finalist. These, this type of squad and this type of power you started to wake up a little bit more for game twos and three. I'll give that one an eight, a nine out of 10 on the scale. I'm waiting. I'm still waiting because it was relatively pedestrian and that's pedestrian for his standards of for night in the mid lane. I think that's one of those ones where we're still, I haven't got the absolute full rev high octane from BLG that we know they are capable of. You know, after you have a big turkey dinner, and you're sitting on the couch afterwards and you're kind of awake but kind of just lounging there. MSI was Knight's turkey dinner and it feels like he's still he's playing, he's going through, he's playing Annie, he's getting a good stun every now and then. But yeah, we have we've seen like 70% of the capability of Knight so far, and BLG sitting pretty at 3-0 and still. BLG has been more than fine because you know what, even if you're only getting that 70-80 from Knight. They've been getting the 90-95 from your boy Elk and on down in the bottom lane. And that has been a big one to look at. They have absolutely continued how strong, how dominant they looked at MSI. And of course, Bin's Bin, man. You, you don't even need to think about Bin and know that you're coming out with some sort of advantage in that top side and getting an advantage to press on later on. I'm just happy to be able to see him on something like a Mordekaiser, or something that's not Kassan, that's <laughs> not Skarner. You know, the more Camille we get to see, a Mordekaiser where he can take over a game, absolutely happy to see that. But yeah, this series game two and three for sure was Elkanon in a big time bot gat, despite LP having now the best gamer acronym, W-E-L-P, AKA Welp. That, I, I know that was beaten to death on the casters, but that's one of the best in-game looking names that you'll ever see. Oh my God. Well, well he was saying Welp uh, a couple a of lot. times. <laughs> in this series unfortunately because out of nowhere we are rolling on through and it is crazy to think that we are at this point in the lpl because blg has survived all the way through this msi hangover through fearless draft and is still gonna be the top team that you're talking about in the lpl yeah and like fourth split in a row where they're gonna be in that conversation even though they're no longer in the LCS, Counter Logic Gaming. Their spirit lives on because Weibo Gaming was truly Counter Logic after looking abysmal in like two out of their three series so far. They somehow show up against the team that was getting garnering so much hype, undefeated anyone's legend, and Weibo comes in, gets a calm, cool, collected 2 0. It turns out it's impossible to do 800 damage when Tarzan is picking Brand and Karthus. I don't know how to exactly explain this other than just you throw up your hands and you say Weibo gaming type of things yep. because what has happened here and the level of performance that we were seeing from Weibo throughout this uh, fearless part of the split was one of those ones where you go I, I don't know if there is a team more incompetent than Weibo is right now in the LPL in finding a way to get across the finish line get that nexus destroyed on your opponent and then we roll into this game against an undefeated 
anyone's legend and you throw it down a clean 2-0 crisp performance featuring absolute cookery of damage from your boy Tarzan rocking the brand and the Karthus with a little asterisk saying it's impossible to do less than a thousand damage on these champions these ones are there's no way you're coming out of base without doing that much damage i mean you'd have to literally not be pressing your buttons on any of the champions but uh, he also had clutch smites across this series game one was actually close and anyone's legend kind of had it in their hands really ale was on the cannon he got so far ahead of breathe in that individual matchup but they kind of fall asleep at the wheel in some of these final team fights. He gets flashed on by Breeze Renekton, doesn't even get to ulti in the game deciding team fight. So credit to Weibo for controlling, coming back in game one, and then slaughtering, dumpstering their way through that second game to go to really spice up this group now. As anyone legend dropped to three and one, Weibo moves to two and two. They're just hunting back for that fraud label because now you get a win like this and you go okay Weibo maybe we're feeling a little bit better about you and you know it's almost guaranteed write it in already they're losing their next match it's just that situation where you're like okay I'm waiting for one more domino to fall to completely write off Weibo stamp it give him the fraud label move on with what's going on with your time this split but then they pull off this type of performance and this type of performance again the level that they play, what you saw from them, and how it verified what you thought you could believe about Weibo and these players. And then you check it up against on who they were up against and what they had done and how they had been carving through the LPL. There's a there's a safety rope thrown down that hole for Weibo Gaming to climb themselves back up and get into the graces of the sunlight of being in the good zones of the LPL. It is a long climb up. That is yeah. going to take a while for them to climb up and going to take some more results as well. But this one gets the rope down into the well. It starts them on that journey back up. And despite the win, I'm still not asking Jahu for a guide on how to play Yone. No, uh, no, no, no. <laughs> hey, look, I, I, it's one of those ones, again, kind of like the faker on Aurelian Soul, where there's an understanding where we've asked to push the champion pool, to add something fresh another wrinkle that one of your opponents one of these younger guys is pulling out and finding success with you still got to work on this one this one's still a work in progress for for shahu let's let's keep it up but the win rate the stat the only stat that matters is a dub for weibo against anyone's legend the only stat that mattered in the lck Guangdong versus kt a pair of rookies Castings coming in for Perfect on the top lane for KT Rolster and Leaper coming in for Bull. Remember, we were so excited about Bull coming in last split. Kind of turned around the entire fortunes for Kwangdong. And then you see these performances from Leaper and you go, Bull who? Because this guy was on fire in both games. Where are they finding these guys? What is going on? What is what is in the water at Kwangdong where you can just say, yeah, another split? Another insane ADC prospect that we're rolling on through that you can be hyped about. Yeah, boy, Leaper. Getting it done down in the bottom lane. There's a lot to discuss in this one. Uh, on the unfortunate side, I don't think it could have gotten worse. For KT Roaster, this is probably as nuclear bad as it could have gotten in the very first uh, episode of this summer split. A lot they of look uh, lost, looking there. Lost. Oof, it is not good for a lot of the members of KT Rolster specifically again also then even the question about doing this type of change in the top side I think a lot of people still wanted to see still thought there was some leash some runway room to develop and, and look at what you had with Perfect D in the top side but we've made this change and as well you look at what's happening around the LCK you get dismantled by this Kwangdong freak squad that has leaped up has shown leaped up has leaper leaping up with a mega performance for them in the bottom lane and then you look at where you were last split in the lck what was your competition well for the most part at the end of the day it was d plus kia what happened to d plus kia yesterday oh yeah they rose up to the challenge and defeated hanwa light in their starter the team that was ahead of them to start out last split so you have already been passed over and you're not looking all these strong like you're going to regroup anytime soon for KT Roaster. Yeah, and we know that Kwangdong is a hungry team. The team we're always talking about that has the potential to start knocking on that top four even 
in the LCK. This is an incredible start for them to be able to do that. But KT, they're giving up Barons that are being snuck, even though they have vision control. Everyone's getting caught out for them. They, this does not look like a veteran lineup. New rookie coming in or not, it's on the four other members to step up and help him get acclimated. And they did not do that and how about a double seraphine pick by the way in this series nowhere else have we seen her so far in summer and all of a sudden both these squads say seraphine that's it i, I think that we're gonna see the pop star move her way back into the meta a little bit find especially as you look at some of these regions that are doing the fearless type of situation i certainly can see her find her way into it even if she does find her way in without fearless in the lck but we move in this series and it's just one of those ones again it looked like the way that they were playing Dong freaks they had the map they had summoner's rift they knew where things were they're like all right we navigate this way and then we get this type of thing kt rolster no map no awareness they forgot to no turn off thing. the streamer setting where it's completely blocked ah not man. just that but they played poorly individually at that point as well so it wasn't just about seemingly lost on the map and not having that coordination it was individual performances on top of it weren't stacking up and so that is the more so the biggest concern right out of this immediate you know short term one way too early type of examination on what is going on for kt rolster for some and one more quick note on leap because this guy, it's been a couple of years. He basically gave up on going pro. The last team he was on was a DRX Academy when Chovy and Deft were on there. And he basically said, I'm never going to start over a guy like Deft. So uh, what's the point of going pro? And now here he is making his debut beating Deft. Not just beating Deft. My boy beat Deft on it. Beat him on Jin. Who's winning on Jin? We talked about Jin possibly being a pick come through around MSI. I think we saw it once did not look all that impressive now we're starting to see it maybe a little bit more mostly in the regions with that fearless draft and mostly like looking again, good just like the seraphine don't need no fearless draft she earned the way in into the draft and that gin performance mighty clean from your boy leaper holy cow buy these kwang gong stocks now because they might get a little expensive real quick if they keep playing like this but that is it today for league unlock erica mark here with you beauties thanks for hanging out and we will catch you on that flippity flip.